All right, this episode is called Resist. So we're gonna have some sort of obstacle in front of us. I'm, I'm curious. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Tokyo Revengers Episode 2. Uh, this one's called Resist, so super excited to find out what goes on. Like I said, this is probably one of the most interesting plots, like settings in an anime that I could have that could have happened. So I'm so curious where this goes, what this ending might be like, what the it's not like Shonen where you know there's a big baddie at the end, you beat them, you win. Like I'm so there's so much mystery when it comes to this, so I'm so curious. I can't waste any more time though. I gotta hop into this episode right now. Remember though, if you guys want early access and full length to this show and all the other shows I'm watching, we are four episodes ahead on Patreon. Links are in the description for you guys. If you guys want to support me and Patreon's not really your thing, if you guys could just leave me a like and a nice comment down below, it really does help me with that YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell so you guys always know exactly when I post. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, at Dapper Darius. We also have a TikTok now if you guys want early access, all that for free, go check that out. And we also have a P.O. Box, guys, if you guys ever want to send me any art, fan mail, anything like that. Info for everything is in the description. Let's hop into this. Tokyo Revengers, Episode 2. Uh, resist. Let's do it. See, and I'm so curious. Who pushed him? What's going on with the train? What's going on with the powers, the flashback, everything? The existential powers that are at B. What's going on? I'm so curious. See, I like how serious Naoto took that as well. Like, most people in anime would not believe anything he said off rip like that. And especially with that handshake that, like, teleported him back to the future, it, like, solidified something. There are so many questions about the powers that be that I have. It's crazy. Ooh, he's got a Red Bull with, an, <laughs> with a MacBook. Episode 2, Resist. Jesus. Two days with no sleep, mega eyes opens with that drink's cold, Jesus. Before he goes back in time? I see. Nato's so... he's it. okay. I like her hair, like that, grown. I like- she looks cool, older, you know? Horrible. Jesus. His predecessor? Okay, Manji Gang is very serious. Yeah, that is. We really don't know the full extent of the powers. That is true, because Naoto does die, at least in the first episode. Oh, I can't get their names down quick enough. I wanted to, damn it. Sano and Kisaki. Okay, okay. That is, last time we got pushed off a train track and almost died. Also true. It's crazy how much taller Naoto is to Takemichi now that they're both grown adults, you know? Crazy how that happens with puberty. <laughs> it actually... Okay! Naoto was right! And the, he's literally... It's a few days later, right? Or it's the next day, maybe? Yep. So it is 12 years ago to the present day. Yep. Yep, it did work, and you just got socked in the face. Here we go. Hear them, the same guys from last episode. Kiyomasa. He's the top delinquent. ギャラリー集まんなくなっ
That does sound horrible. Hell on earth. I understand. I fully do. That's super ballsy. Jesus. Broken ribs? Oh my god. That would hurt so bad. Pictures his life all ahead of him and how many times he's had to say sorry since then. Doesn't go through with it. Yeah, there's always one delinquent who always takes it too far. Gotta have the extremist. Reminds me of Karate Kid. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is a good question. That, <laughs> that is some good levity in this very horrible scenario. <laughs> this is fucked up. I feel for my guy. My man's limping through the streets. I feel him. He's gonna have to go through these these obstacles. He's gonna not have hope and faith in himself, but he's gonna have to get through that, you know. Think about her. You are. Which I understand. It's easy to run away. Running away is the easy thing. Oh, here she is. He looks so much like his older self with his hair, like, down and ruffled like that, not, like, in his do. That's sweet. That's adorable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're cute. That is a cute nickname. But I told you, I think she's gonna give him, like, I understand completely why he'd want to run away, but you need to tough this out. You need to. She's worth it. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Takamichi is not the strongest. But I, I like this aspect that they have. It's very roundabout, but Takamichi is most definitely saving. It has a mission right now to save uh, Hinata with this situation. But I do believe in turn, she is going to save him as well and make him a much better person and, and in a much better scenario. So they're both going to save each other. And I really like that. See how happy you are, see how, what good times you're having. You can't lose this. That's cute. Yeah, how are you not going to try to save her after that? You know, how are you not going to get the confidence you need? That's how it goes, though, in life. The best ones always get taken first. It's, it's so tragic. People who genuinely deserve to live long, happy, amazing lives get taken, and it's so sad. Takuya. Wow. I feel bad for Takuya. I also feel bad for all of them. This is a horrible situation. He's taking it like a champ, though. And I respect Akun, who said he would do it for him if he could, but like I said, a horrible situation. <sighs> Takamichi says Takuya almost died during that fight. We gotta change it for the different. Something's gotta happen. Yeah, they're they're cool, cool friends, good peeps. Looking back on it, you know, can be a an eye opener. They're like the 
and I don't mean to say this rude at all, but they're like the wannabe delinquents who aren't into WoW or aren't into MMOs or video games, so they just go out and do whatever. And obviously they have their good kids with good hearts who go on to hopefully do good things. But then you have the actual who delinquents who smoke cigarettes, have fight clubs, murder people. And it's just like, this is a good little, you know, visualization for that. It's a good little eye opener, you know. I know this isn't going to go well. I know he's not a fighter. He's frail. That's the main dude in charge, uh, Kiyomasa, right? I'll fight instead. My god, the confidence on this kid. I don't know if I should call him a kid or an adult. He de te technically is an adult. Can't run away. I love this. He's facing himself. Hey. Right? This man's got balls. Even your leader, Akun. Yeah, you have to change or nothing, Lil. I respect it so much. But to do this the day after you got beat with a baseball bat by this man. First time here in the ending, I'm excited. Oh, this show is fucking awesome so far. It's super coincidental, I think, but uh, Hinata in her younger form really reminds me, looks wise and personality wise, of like Kushieda or Minorin from Toradora. Very friendly, very go-getter you know outgoing same similar hair and color you know i just i don't know and i really like minorine minorine was one of my favorite characters in Tor toradora so the fact that they're very similar and she, it, just like she was going out of her way to be like i if only i was a dude you know i know karate so i'd be way strong i'd protect you know this is be so she's so sweet and and just i don't know i just she does not deserve her death which is what takemichi was saying and I fully agree. People, good people get taken out of this world way too often. And it's, that's probably the biggest tragedy of this world. But I do like, I really, really enjoy how it's so easy to revert back to, to the same things and the same issues that you have. You know, he's constantly running away. He can't challenge, he can't face his obstacles head on. And the catalyst to change that is his friends, which are amazing. And I was kind of eye open to how cool they are and Hinata and all that. And I'm just like, it's really nice, you know, to have two such awesome catalysts in your life, but not even realize how awesome they were until you physically were teleported back in time to see them. But he has really good friends, amazing friends and, and a really nice girlfriend. And it's like, I can totally understand why you'd want to work hard to protect them, but to change your life as well. Like this is a golden scenario right here. And yes, you have to go through hell, like physical torture, physical hell in order to, to come out stronger on the other side, but you will be such a stronger, better man for it. You know, and the people around you will be saved and oh, like this really, the show has me so curious about how it's going to end and what the end game is going to be. Cause like, is this gonna be something like other shows where it's a happy ending and it actually does turn out well? Is this gonna be a little bit of a twist like more modern anime is starting to do? You know, I'm so curious. I'm very curious, loved that twist at the end there. Especially because he knew Takuya was not gonna make it out of this fight. Okay, he says, oh my God, he's so ballsy. The slave versus the master, or whatever he said, the king. Like you and me fucking Kiyoma. Oh my, Kiyomasa is a fucking gangster. Man, oh, this show is something else. I, mm, this show is something else. I can see why you guys like it. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will catch you guys on this next one. Check out that Patreon if you guys don't want to wait. Peace out, Dapper Squad.